Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America. I'm Walter Zagrevich, and in just a moment, I'm going to bring on here Reverend Albert Ramirez. But thank you for joining us this uh, day. I said good morning, but that's good morning on the West Coast of the United States. It may be afternoon or evening where you are at. And I just want to ask you to please take a quick moment before we go any further and press that little button that says share. And that way your friends, your loved ones can join us. And together we can pray for America, for the nations and for your needs. And we're going to be praying for uh, needs that we have received from different parts of the world. And we're going to be trusting and believing God. God answers prayer. And welcome, Brother Albert. It is good to have you back on here. Amen. <clears throat> God bless you. And thank you for joining us. Uh, being in agreement, and thank you for being in agreement with the Holy Spirit, being obedient to the Holy Spirit as he yields, as he leads and guides us. Uh, we need to learn to yield to him, his guidance, and as far as being obedient to when he leads and guides us to do what he tells us to do. Always important to, 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 to be in faith. To be in faith comes by meditating on God's word, hearing and hearing and hearing the same things over sometimes, and it and, and, and it builds faith in you when you start acting on it. That's when faith starts being built in you. When you hear the word of God and you start acting upon it, and then you start seeing the, uh, the Holy Spirit, he will always confirm God's word with signs and wonders following. Amen. Absolutely. And people do need encouragement. <laughs> people do need, rem we all need to be reminded of God's word, God's promises. Uh, God's word is God's will. And so, and God's will has not changed. His power <clears throat> has not changed. His ability to transform lives has not changed. And so we need to get back to our anchor in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, we were emphasizing this yet in yesterday's broadcast with Nina, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It's when we're strong in God that we can deal with everything else. We in ourselves do not have the strength to counteract the devil and his forces, but and the devil's not afraid of us as a person. He's afraid of that Jesus who lives in us, and greater is he, Jesus Christ, who lives in us than he who lives in the world. And we are seeing headway. We are, I mean, we're seeing uh, uh, changes, but you know, the word that we felt yesterday, Brother Albert, is to emphasize perseverance. Keep moving on. Don't, uh, don't rely because you see one thing uh, starting to change and another. We need to keep pressing forward. We need to keep uh, dismantling in the spirit realm um, th those uh, principalities, those rulers of darkness, those hierarchies that are in the spirit realm that affect people's minds, that affect people's uh, um, decisions. And, uh, and so we have been praying for America. We continue to pray for America. And I believe that America shall be saved. But um, um, you've said, you already touched on it. We need to be reminded of God's word. How often we uh, get distracted and we see something bad. We, we hear something bad. And rather than looking at it in, uh, through the prism of God's word, and God's ability to change that circumstance, we immediately start uh, to react in a human way, and um, which is natural, but we need to keep getting back to that anchor, don't we, Brother Albert? That's right. And it's important to, um, to be obedient. I mean, that's, that's the thought the Lord has given me today is about being obedient. That goes for all of us, being obedient as the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us to do things that sometimes... For example, sometimes people are waiting for healing uh, from certain illnesses or ailments, and they uh, the Holy Spirit speaks to them about about forgiving somebody. You know, it's a simple little matter, but it's a very deep matter to God. You know, about forgiving somebody, and the Holy Spirit's just bringing that thought to them. And maybe you know, it's just just like seems like a, a, a whimsical thought that just comes to them about forgiving someone. 
and they don't obey it, you know, and it's the Holy Spirit trying to give, bring God's best to them, that if they would just obey that, obey the Holy Spirit, you know, um, that, that God's answer would come, God's healing would come in their body, you know, God's deliverance from a circumstance or a problem they're going through, that if they would just obey God and, 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 to, and listen to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit directing them and guiding them. And that's how he speaks to us pretty much uh, the, the majority of the time is that still small voice, that thought that comes to you that's, that's in line with God's word, you know, that's in agreement with God's word. It comes to us and it's the Holy Spirit trying to lead you into God's best, into, mm. the, into an answer to your circumstance, to your problem. But it's obedience, you know, there's a scripture in, in Isaiah that says, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You know, sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes we are willing to do what God tells us to do, and we will go ahead and, 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 and do it uh, according to our own uh, knowledge or our, our, own, uh, our own intellectual ideas. But when we're obedient to the Holy Spirit, when he leads us to tell you to do something, majority of the time he'll tell you something to do something that to you it sounds might sound ridiculous to your analytical intellectual mind. But if you're obedient to the Holy Spirit, then he will lead you and guide you into God's best. And it's important to remember that. And, and sometimes we are, uh, you know, in, in that verse it talks about in Isaiah, it says if you're willing and obedient. Sometimes we're willing to do what God says but we're not obedient. We don't do it. You know, we, uh, when our heart, we're willing. And then sometimes we're obedient, but, but in our hearts, we're saying, man, I really don't want to do this, but God said to do it. So I'm going to do it. So we're not really obedient or willing to do it. But if you're willing and obedient to do what God tells you to do, uh, he will anoint you and bless you with the knowledge and the, and the, his presence, his power to do what God leads you to do. <clears throat> Man, you know, you, 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 you hit on that and it's, uh, uh, it just brings back to mind several things, several testimonies you recently had on the broadcast. One, uh, I believe it was in our Russian broadcast with Ben and Zina Shevchenko, and uh, uh, they shared about the, the situation. One pastor was speaking in their church from Moldova. There was a woman who uh, got saved and became very active in the church. Um, and then she got sick with cancer and they prayed and nothing seemed to happen. And so they started asking her about her past and so on. Have you forgiven? Is there anyone you haven't forgiven? She says, no. And then, but the pastor felt to keep prodding and they said, oh yeah, uh, her mom. She said, I can't forgive my mom. Uh, why? Uh, he says, you need to forgive everyone. Otherwise you're holding back God's blessing and God's Man. healing power in this case. And she says, well, I can't forgive her. Why? Because uh, when I was born, she threw me in the garbage and I mean, literally threw her away. And you could imagine, I mean, if you yes. find out that your mom didn't want you and threw you literally in the garbage, someone rescued you out of a dumpster uh, and raised you up, um, there would be some very hurt feelings there. But um, she, she just couldn't at first get herself to forgive but finally, she realized that that was what she needed to do. And, and you just said that, obedience. And when she obeyed what God wanted her to do, and she released her mom, um, and suddenly she was healed. And, and she was so overjoyed that she says, is there anyone else I can forgive? Because she was so <laughs> elated. God just touched her so powerfully. And, uh, um, and then I, I, I'm brought back to, uh, to testimonies of uh, Igor, the pastor and pilot, whom I've had on the Russian broadcast the last two, uh, this week and last week. And he shared um, how that he was in the Soviet military. You probably remember Igor was a student in our first Bible school in Kiev. And I believe you taught there, yes. Yeah. And so uh, uh, and Igor was... God uh, prompted him to just pray out loud in the officer's mess hall <laughs> as they were sitting down to eat. 
and he stood up and started praying over his meal. He said you could hear the forks falling out of these guys' hands. And what is happening here? You know, this is a communist country. You're not supposed to believe in God. And um, and 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 so and there was. Uh, he said he packed his bag. He thought this might be the end of his uh, military career, but. Uh, uh, God, he he did this in obedience to God. He was Amen. prompted by the Holy Spirit, like you said. So what happens is the political officer, made, you know, the KGB was there always, you know, to make sure everybody towed the line. And he called them up to his office. Well, he thought that was it. But um, he said, are you okay? Yes. <laughs> you know, Can you still perform your duties? Yes. He said, what happened to you? So he shared his testimony. And to his shocking surprise, instead of saying, you're gone, uh, you're out, uh, he says, I want to gather all the officers and I want to share you to share what uh, your experience with all the officers. I mean, he oh, wanted to. <laughs> yeah. It was an opportunity of God at that moment to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, even though I'm sure that I can guarantee you that was a pretty hard thing to be obedient to. But he he had the faith, the simplicity in faith to do, to be obedient. And God answered by ministering through him with the Holy Spirit to those other uh, other officers, those other pilots. Right, right. So he was just born again. So he invited somebody else to come and help. And he gave out New Testaments, but then he said he arranged to speak on a, a battleship. Um, he went and asked for permission uh, to share uh, with the sailors there, and um, and they said yes, and uh, he thought that that other Christian was going to come and help him with some pr the preaching part, and, and he would just give out the New Testaments. Well, the other person <laughs> uh, didn't show up, had to go someplace else, and Igor ended up being there in front of 200 sailors and he said they're laughing they're you know they're uh, they're not be they're misbehaving and so Igor says I'm going to give you a gift and uh, wow gift wow okay so well, he gave him new testaments uh Gideon new testaments that he had with him and then he said you know um um you know he he know what else to say he said but you know what there was one a scripture that it really had an impact in my life. Can I share with you? And he did, you know. And he says, as he began to speak, he doesn't know what happened to him. He says, for 20 minutes, he kept speaking. <laughs> the Holy Spirit just came on him. Praise and, God. And, you know, so here's a situation where he was stood up, you might say, by somebody else, but God used that to, to launch him to uh, into ministry literally and when he got done he said um he wasn't sure what to say he says well do you guys want to receive the lord um and they said yes he says well let's get on our knees and pray he says all these 200 sailors got on their knees to pray Christ. yes and receive jesus i mean it was just amazing uh, but again it started with what you just said that act yes. of obedience to that prompting of the Holy Spirit and not stopping but persisting because later he shared and we talked about it yesterday on the broadcast how that uh, he was started going to other ships you know and he had access as a military officer he'd get permission to talk and one the captain uh, the the um, second in command of the ship would not allow him so he said well on what basis so he took him to the captain's quarters and uh, the captain uh, also said no and then he said, well, on what basis? I mean, he just persisted. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he said, well, let's call the admiral. And so he calls the admiral right in front of him. And to his astonishment, the admiral says, yes, uh, get the sailors out there on the deck, set up a microphone and let him give out those New Testaments and speak Praise to them. God. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> it was that's, still the Soviet great. Union. It was starting to 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 open up, but I mean, it was it started with that act of obedience, you know. Mm -hmm. Later, as you recall, he ended up in our Bible school, and then he went yeah. and started a church. But the thing is that 
it started from obeying that prompting of the Holy Spirit, that voice, like you said. Sometimes people are expecting for a, a voice of thunder uh, right. to just really come in and hammer them uh, or, or somehow just, you know, I mean, knock them off their feet. But it often doesn't happen that way. It's that still small voice of Absolutely. the Holy Spirit. Uh, but that's Albert, right. I kind of uh, interrupted you there. No, <laughs> fine. no, that's fine. I love hearing that about Igor. I mean, I didn't know those testimonies about him, but that's that's just amazing. I praise God for that. I mean, the scriptures tell us there's good examples in the scripture. Yeah, first of all, you have like like sometimes you know uh, you know like this kind of similar to what Igor went through was was Peter. You know, Peter was up. You know, was eating, went up to pray on top of his house in the Book of Acts. You know, in when he went up to in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, when he went up to pray, I mean, you, and you have to think about the religious mindset of that time is Peter, you know, the Jews, you know, they basically almost would stone you for, you know, going, going and being in with, uh, with uh, Gentiles, you know, but, but God through the Holy Spirit gave him a vision of, you know, a thing, uh, you know, blanket or whatever you want to call it, being let down with all kinds of animals, unclean animals, according to Jewish tradition. But then he said uh, to, that three men were going to come. Uh, then, he, then the Holy Spirit told him uh, there's, there were some men that were going to seek him and go with him and nothing doubting, you know. And it would be easy for him to doubt because they were, they were sent by, by a centurion, you know, and they were, they were probably, uh, you know, Gentiles. So anyway, so the Holy Spirit, he had the Holy Spirit's word. To be to go and he had to obey, even though in his his own religious mindset, I mean that was probably illegal according to Judaism. And he went, and the thing is, what happened is when he went, then he started. He went, and then the centurion gathered all his friends and family and brought him in there. And all they did was had to hear the word, just kind of like like with Igor's situation. All they did was hear the word. They heard the word as soon as they heard the word, the baptism of the Holy Spirit came up. They heard that. And, and I'm sure the word that he was talking about was Jesus, you know, about, you know, G you must be born again and all the whole thing about Jesus. But, and then once they accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and savior, then, then they just kept hearing what, what Peter was saying, because it doesn't go into detail about what he said, but he was probably telling them about the word and then about the baptism. Holy, but the Holy Spirit fell on those Gentiles. He had that happening because Peter obeyed the Holy Spirit and is prompted through a vision, uh, through that inner voice of the Holy Spirit telling him, three men are going to seek for you, go with them, nothing doubting. And then you have in the Old Testament, you have in the second uh, book of Kings, uh, chapter five, it, you see about Naaman, the leper. You know, he came, <clears throat> there was a little Jewish slave girl that she came and and, and then this Naaman was a, was a big uh, captain of, of the army and, and uh, the Assyrians, and then they, they went, she came and she told him that there was a prophet that would deliver him. Well, there was a man of God that would deliver him from his leprosy. So he goes with all kinds of gifts to, to Elijah, Elisha, the prophet. And then he tells him, you know, he see, again, it, it comes back to being obedient because he expected of his own intellect, his own way of thinking, you know, because the word that the man of God gave him was to go dip himself seven times into this dirty Jordan, this dirty river and the Jordan can be kind of dirty looking. So, and he says, this is their kind of, he's and he, his own thinking, his own leaned upon his own understand thinking, wouldn't it be better if I dipped in the seven times into a nice clean river, you know, over here, in, you know, where we're from, but, but, but he went away angry, you know, cause, and, he, and like I said, his own thinking, his own thought was, he says, he is supposed that he would wave his hand over the leprosy and it would be gone, you know, but he didn't, he told them to go dip himself into the, which didn't sound reasonable, you know, so what, but, so he got angry about it because what he wanted him to do, and he did not want to do that, obviously, Naaman, so he went away angry, then the, then the, then the slave girls, I, I'm, you know, was, I'm sure was filled in with all that information, and she said, now, master, if he'd have told you to do some great thing, like slay a thousand men, wouldn't you have done it? <laughs> You know, just for an example, they, she, it doesn't say that in scripture, but doing some great thing, you know, she goes, wouldn't you have done it? In other words, it was obedience. It was a fact of obedience. It was a matter of obedience. So he thought about it, went back, dipped himself in obedience to that. that and, and stop and think about it. That, that word from God, that direction, 
that statement from the man of God, from God, go dip yourself seven times. That was from God. That wasn't just Elisha. That was from God, God's word. Go dip yourself seven times. And God wanted to test the man to see if he would be obedient. And he wasn't at first. He got angry. And that happens to, to us, all of us. A lot of times we, we get angry about what God wants us to do. And we think it should be a certain way. We lean upon our own understanding. But Naaman, went, he, he thought about it, you know, and and the, the young slave girl reminded him that he went back, he obeyed. He obeyed what the Lord gave him, the, what the, the man of God gave him the word. And when he dipped himself, he came back, he came out of that, that, uh, that, Jordan, that river with, with fresh baby skin. So it was a matter of obedience. And, and like I said, he, at first he leaned upon his own understanding, thought that he would just wave or speak something over him. But it, it, it was it was something that seemed illogical to do was to dip yourself in this dirty little river, you know, instead of one of the clean, nice, fresh water rivers that where he was from. So it's a, well, it was it is, obedience to God being obedient. And and when he was obedient, you know, the answer came a lot of the times. Like I said, when we lean upon our own understanding for for when God, God might tell us to do something. So we start you know, analyzing and thinking, well, maybe he means to do it this way and do it this way, or I should do this or talk to this person or, or, you know, use my, my, my seminary training and speak this. But when all it is, is God wants you to do something very simple. You know, uh, I think it's second Corinthians 11, three, it talks about that, that the, the Corinthians, he wanted to remind them about the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. But, but we, like I said, we overanalyze things. Sometimes the Holy Spirit wants to lead us to do something. And then we, we, we want to do it. We try to reason and a- analyze it to where we want to do it. We, we, we're thinking and, and assuming he wants us to do it this way. But in the case with Naaman, he wanted him to dip in that dirty water, which, which seemed illogical to him because there were cleaner waters around. But it was obedience to what the, the Lord said. And like I said, that's the thing sometimes that holds back answers from us is that we don't get answers from things because the Holy Spirit's telling us to do something or, 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 or telling us, you know, to yield to him or do something that he wants us to do. And we, we're just not obedient to it. Uh, or we think he wants us to do it our way, <laughs> but it's always got to be God's way, obedience to God's way. Amen. Well, that brings uh, uh, several thoughts here. And that is you could imagine him going into that water and coming out the first time, he says, well, nothing happened. Then a second time, nothing happened. I mean, you could imagine, put yourself in the shoes of Naaman. You know, we could be critical. We could, uh, you know, say all kinds of things, but you got to put yourself in that man's shoes. And you you come out of that water and say, well, you know, hey, that preacher prayed for me and nothing happened. You know, look, you know. Uh, but, you know, this is something that I always tell people, put your faith in action. And, and that is what he was doing. He had to put that simple faith that he had just received into action, and he t- had to obey. Um, and, and, and it wasn't one time, but seven times. Sometimes I tell people, put right. your faith in action, and they just kind of, you know, they couldn't lift their hand. They kind of try, oh, nothing happened. Well, no, you've got to ex- try to do it, not once, but you yeah. just keep Start exercising your faith because faith is not just a fact, but it's an act. It's a, it, it, faith is a muscle that we exercise, we use. And so we have to put our faith into action. And that's what Naaman was doing there. And as you had just pointed out, how illogical. You want to get clean skin, but you go into a dirty river <laughs> and, <laughs> and dunk yourself seven times. I mean, I mean, how dirty do you want me to get? You know? <laughs> and yet he comes out with the opposite of what you would expect. Instead of coming out muddy and dirty out of the Jordan, he comes out clean with fresh baby skin, as Brother Albert put it, you know, instead of leprosy. You know, Brother Albert, uh, before you continue, there is a, uh, uh, two things that come to mind. Remember uh, the test, uh, the situation where the, the, the uh, four guys, four friends brought their friend on a stretcher and mm-hmm. they couldn't get in. Jesus was preaching inside, I believe it was Capernaum. And they, it was packed full of people. And the power of God was present to heal. Nobody was getting healed. Why? Because they, the people that packed the auditorium had doubts, unbelief, came to criticize Jesus. 
And these four guys who came with faith, they couldn't get in to bring their friend who was on a stretcher, paralytic. So they go up on the roof, they open the roof and let him down. But you know, Jesus looked at him, he forgives his sins, which is the most important thing in our lives. Right. But then he says, get up and walk. I mean, that man had to obey Jesus because mm -hmm. he couldn't walk. If he could walk, he wouldn't have been brought on a stretcher. And yet Jesus mm -hmm. tells him or asks him to do what he could not do. That is obedience. That is really putting your faith out there and trying mm -hmm. to do what you know. You, your physical body tells you you can't do this. You're in a stretch. You're paralyzed. Right. And yet Jesus says, do it. He didn't say here, you know, he says, you get up, take up your bed and walk. And in obedience, yeah. he does it. And he's walking and leaping and, and praising right. God. I, I got a little, a little testimony about this, um, and that was we were in Bolivia with Tony years ago, holding a crusade, and a man came up to me with three his three daughters who were deaf and uh, and and mute, and they never had spoken. They were born that way, and mm -hmm. so he asked, uh, like you said, some people think, oh, you just wave your hand, and you know they don't understand. And so they, he asked, uh, he came up to me and said, would you heal my three daughters? Well, I said, uh, number one, it's not we who heal people, it's the Lord. But I said, you need to receive Jesus into your life and uh, keep coming because faith comes by hearing God's word and God is going to do the job. God is going to do the work uh, and heal them. Well, he didn't like that. He just kind of went away angry. I mean, I think he was kind of angry by the look on his face. And I didn't see him for two, three days, but I think he thought it through and 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 then he obeyed what I had said. And like, like three nights <laughs> later, um, he comes up. I almost didn't recognize him. Obviously, there was thousands of people there. And I don't know anybody. It's just... Uh, uh, just my brother Adam was a missionary there and a few people there. Um, we didn't know the people there, but I'm pretty good at recognizing faces, but I couldn't almost recognize him because there was such a huge smile on his face. And he says, Walter, tonight, my wife and I, we gave our lives to Jesus. And he says, right. you know what, just, and you know, he says, we had just prayed the prayer of faith. And he says, you know what happened? God just healed my three daughters. Praise and God. And he puts him on the platform, asks us to check him. Um, but, you know, he was like Naaman, expecting, you know, just a wave of a hand or something. Um, mm -hmm. But no, I told him, you need to give your life to the Lord. Come and listen to God's word and you will receive. And he did. Uh, you know, the three God. little girls. Not only did he get saved and his wife, but the daughters were were um, healed, praise God. But anyway, you, I, I, I interrupted you, but, no, but you no, know, no, not at as all. you say things, I mean, it just prompts me to share some of these tests. No, yeah, no, no, that's perfectly great to hear that. But uh, because you can stop and think about that man too. He probably was Catholic, you know, probably from the, you know, South America, most people yeah. down there are Catholic. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's you got to think against his religion, you know, like, like, like Peter, you know, it was against his religion to go to that that centurion's house to preach to them, you know? So at the time, because that was the beginning of the church back then in the book of Acts. So <clears throat> God was calling. And that's, that was a revelation to Peter actually. in that 10th chapter of Acts was that God was calling the Gentiles also, which, in, in which at that time, the Jews, Peter and the rest of the, 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 the apostles, and I'm sure the Jews at the time, they had no idea yet that the Holy, that God was, was that God sent Jesus for the whole world, not just, the Jewish people. So uh, that was a revelation to Peter, you know, and, and that, and that man, that probably was a revelation to him in, in his Catholicism. There's, there's, there's actually an act, you know, that you have to do. There's, you, you need to receive Jesus Christ into your heart, you know, you, you know, to, it, it wasn't necessary uh, re, a requirement that, to, that, that God would heal his daughters, you know, God, could have healed his daughters as a sign to him, but God knows the hearts and the thoughts of every one of us. So he knew what that man needed to do. And that man needed that you're talking about needed to, uh, he needed to receive Jesus Christ. And God knew that God knew that because yeah, sometimes God will heal the three daughters 
And then later on, the dad gets saved because he sees the miraculous power of God move. But God knew it. The, God turned it around the other way. Whereas, see, some people may have, you know, uh, some 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 ministers might hear about this testimony that you just gave and think that you can make a, a, a what's the word I want to use a, a, a procedure or. Oh, it's, you know, and now you, what happens is everybody has to receive Jesus first and then the God will heal them or heal their kid. That's not always the way God works. That's why it's important to be obedient and to be led by the spirit. You know, uh, like it says in Romans 8, 14, those that be sons of God are led by the spirit of God. It's important to be led by the spirit is because he might tell you to do it the opposite way. <laughs> you know, like Naaman told him to do the opposite thing that he thought it was right. And, and he might tell ministers to do the same thing. Sometimes you may, you might make a doctrine out of it. You know, like, first of all, you need to accept Jesus and then God will heal your daughter of this. That's not always the case. God, I've known many cases and, and prayed for many people that where I saw God do the miracle first and then they got saved. You know, for example, that couple that had the dead baby in the womb for the baby was dead in the womb for a month was going to, you know, in Poltava, uh, you know, they weren't saved, you know, they weren't born again and the whole, the whole thing was I could have thought that they needed to accept Jesus first. And then, then the thought came across, but I just, I just, my compassion, my heart went out to them and I prayed for the baby. And next, the next day they, they left crying and went to, to, uh, to Kiev, to the big hospital in Kiev to get that baby removed. And the doc, the baby was alive, you know, because I called forth life in the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy spirit brought the Lord Jesus brought that child back to life. And then they came back the next day and then they got born again. They got born again because they saw the power of God. Whereas, like I said, we can't make a, a doctrine out of it or, or what's the word I want to use? There's another one, um, uh, you know, that every time it has to be this way. No, that's why it's important to be obedient and to be led by the spirit because he may lead it to lead you to do it a different way some other time. So it's just important to yield to the Holy Spirit. It tells us that in Romans chapter six, to yield to God, the Holy Spirit, and, and, and to be led by him uh, and to ask, you know, you got to ask, you know, ask, you know, like Paul, like Paul did in, in, in Acts chapter nine, when he, once he, here's, here's a religious man, you know, is killing the Christians, putting them in prison, beating them. And, and yet, yet when, when he had a, uh, uh, an intervention by Christ on the road to Damascus, you know, in, in Acts nine, I think it's in Acts nine, two, I think it is, he says, Lord, what would you have me to do? That's a yielded spirit. You know, and then, and then when he went to Ananias' house to get baptized with the Holy Ghost, and the scales came off his eyes, you know, the Lord, the Lord told him that I will show him what things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now I'm sure he didn't, he wouldn't. I don't think anybody in their right mind would want to suffer. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, it, 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 but just the obedience that Paul had, he was willing to suffer for Christ's sake, and and he did at some time, at, at a, you know, in occasions. As you see, his, read about his te his uh, experiences. Paul he did suffer for Christ's sake, but but his but his yieldedness was when he first when when Jesus knocked him off his high horse and he was you know the Lord uh, appeared to him in that bright light on the road to Damascus. He said, "Lord, what would you have me to do?" And sometimes that's what we need to do. <laughs> Lord, what do you want me to do? Like that, my myself and my ministry. You know, I have a prophetic ministry. I'm not a pastor, but I have a prophetic calling in the Lord. I, I was going to fast three days and ask the Lord, what do you, I was involved with another ministry, a prophetic ministry, my mentor. And, and I, and I just, you know, I, you know, my spirit, you know, I'd been there for 15 years and I was asking the Lord, I just felt, uh, you know, the Lord was calling me out of there and some cir circumstances arose to where it was, nece it was becoming necessary for me to move on that the Lord said, uh, you know, I, I was going to fast. I said, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I said, like Paul, I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? I go, no, I know what, you said to do, and I know how to preach and whatnot. I go, and I don't like the prophetic calling, which I did it at the time. But I said, Lord, but what do you want me to do? And then he appeared to me, the Lord Jesus appeared to me the, after the first day of fasting and praying in the spirit. Uh, the Lord appeared to me, you know, and he, and, and he, the words he said, it's a long story short, the word, the thing, the only words he said to me in the vision that he gave me was, and he was standing with the white robe next to me and showing me a big office, which was quickly furnished by, furnished by a bunch of people coming in in a few seconds. And he just stood there waiting for my, my yieldedness and my obedience to it. You know, uh, and, 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 and I, and I knew it was going to require responsibilities that I had no knowledge of how to do like the administrative part of a ministry. And I, and he said, and I, and when he said, 
He said, and I said, Lord, what is this? And he says, this is your ministry, international prophetic ministry. Well, I mean, you know, I, I was kind of nervous to, to accept the calling at that time. You know, I was kind of nervous. And like I said, there's a lot of things that I didn't know how I would, I didn't know how to administrate all of this stuff. And, you know, but I said, Lord, if, and I just took a deep breath. I said, Lord, if you'll be with me, I'll do it. And then the division was over. Long story short, I started my ministry after that. There was a few little instances, of course, where, where the devil tries to stop, but you, I just kept pressing forward and, and I'm doing my ministry today, what the Lord told me at that time to do. So it's important to be obedient and yield and to ask, you know, to ask also, to ask what he wants you to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, Albert, there are people out there who may be um, in that uh, uh, moment of decision where God is calling them to do something. And it doesn't, uh, it may be a pulpit ministry, but it may be just uh, other ministry because ministry is not just pulpit ministry. Uh, there are many, many callings of God and God is calling people to be obedient to him is the message that we are trying to convey here today, whether it's, uh, you know, one type of ministry or another. Uh, but one thing that God is calling all of us to do, and that is to share Jesus with others. He Amen. wants us to be evangelists in the sense of sharing the gospel. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that's God's desire for every one of us. We don't have to be a pastor or prophet or evangelist or teacher. Uh, we just need to be obedient to God. And yeah. you know what? As you're obedient in small things, God puts you over greater things. Uh, but thank you so much, uh, Albert, for sharing that. Let's pray for people out there that may be in that, uh, um, in that point of trying to make a decision right now um, concerning ministry. Cons uh, maybe it's just obeying God and something that God laid on their heart, a need that God showed them that they need to do something about. Uh, so let's pray for that, and then we're going to pray for the uh, for needs for uh, for those who are sick, and then we'll pray for America and the nations. But would you pray right now for those people that are in that position that you were just talking about, where God, you know, is calling them, and 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 they're just a little hesitant, not sure, you know, is this really God? Yeah, yeah. Let me can I, can I read a scripture here, Walter? Um, yes, of course. In in the in the fifth chapter of. Uh, of, of second Corinthians also, it says this, um, cause it'll tie in with our prayers that we're going to pray. It says, as, let, let, let me, let me start in the fifth chapter of second Corinthians it says, uh, okay, let's, I'll start at verse four. It says, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan. Wait a minute. Yeah. Do we do groan that being burdened up for that? We would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of, of immortality. Wait a minute. That's that's uh. Hold on a second. That's the wrong verse here. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. It's it's the scripture where it talks about here that that he. Uh, wait a minute. I'm th trying to think of the verse. Is it Second Corinthians? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm looking in the fifth chapter. It's the tenth chapter of Second Corinthians. Okay. It says, for, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then verse five says this, casting down imaginations and every high thing, imaginations. This is where the war, warfare is, because he's talking about weapons, weapons being the word of God, uh, the, the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, of course. And, and it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that it exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God comes from his word. And throughout the scriptures, it talks about that, about we, we grow in the knowledge of God. It says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, to the obedience of Christ, the obedience of the word, to being doers of the word, not just hearers only. The obedience of Christ is being obedient to his word. So, And it tells you that in the fifth chapter of the first epistle of John about about those that, that love God, they're, they're, they will obey his commandments, they're obedient to the Holy Spirit's leading, the commands, the, the guidance, the direction, the instructions. It's not always just a command from God to, 
guide people, but it's instruction sometimes. It's a still small word of the Holy Spirit saying something, you know, drink this, don't drink that, or do this, do that. If you just obey that small things, then the more we yield and yield and yield, the more we're led by the Spirit of God, the more he can trust us in what and how and, and where and when he leads us, you know, and that's so important because people, uh, it, it's, got, it's not, it's Jesus, when he said for us to pray in Matthew chapter six, you know, he says, it's thy kingdom come, thy will be done, not our will be done. You know, and Jesus himself says in John 5 30, he says, he says, I can't of my own self do nothing, but as I hear the, the, and that's what I do. And then obviously he's obedient to everything that God instructed him to do, everything God instructed him to say. And sometimes, sometimes the, the instruction from the Holy Spirit is, is saying something or saying something to somebody, you know, and trying to encourage somebody, you know, and then, then when you, when you give of yourself to something, to somebody, for somebody else, to the help of someone else, then God pours into you what you need, what you have need of. It, it, it all works for the same thing. It's all about love, you know, love, love is, is, is what motivates us, is our faith works through love, it says in Galatians 5. So, I mean, it's so important to realize that in order for God to lead us, to, and it's a matter of yielding, 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 and like we said, to the obedience of Christ, what we just read here, to the obedience of the word, obedience of the, the word of the Holy Spirit in that still small voice, in, in, in obedience to this word, the word of God, in obedience to a, even sometimes prophetic words and, and, and words of knowledge that you may receive from a prophet or minister of God. So as we obey in those areas, then, then God, God, uh, I, I got a lot of testimony I could share about, but I don't want to take up all the time, but about people being obedient, the Lord gave me a word for them and they weren't obedient until seven years later. <laughs> and then once, but the, the, the amazing thing was that word remained that, that word of knowledge, that, that, that prophecy remained until they were obedient. Can I share that, or, or do we have time? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we know in the Bible that uh, there is that scripture, uh, a passage where we read, it's in Habakkuk, I believe, where God says, the right division is uh -huh. for an appointed, appointed time. time. It will not tarry, but it will come in the appointed time. So sometimes, um, and this is the misconception, and sometimes people misunderstand the prophetic in that uh, they think that's going to be fulfilled the next second. Well, it might be. There are things that will be get fulfilled yeah. in the next yeah. few minutes, but there are things that are for an appointed time. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. obviously, the Bible is full of prophecies, were an appointed time. At the appointed time, Jesus came into this world, but the prophecies were hundreds of years beforehand. Yeah. But uh, but in this case, uh, I, I, I think I've heard you share that. So somebody, I think it'll be powerful to share that um, uh, with people. And do you want to share that before we pray for people? Or do you sure. want to go? Sure. Well, well, I was having a meeting and this couple came up. It was a brother and a sister and they wanted to be pastors. I you know, uh, they had just started coming to my ministry. And when they came to the ministry, they wanted to be pastors. So they came up for prophetic word, for prophetic prayer, you know, or just prayer period. And the Lord gave me a word of knowledge for them that God wanted them, was calling them into evangelism. See, I, and, and at the time, I did not know they wanted to be pastors. And they were, hit, they were, they were adamant about being pastors. So, uh, so I, the Lord, I laid hands, I was praying for them. The, the Holy Spirit gave me a word from that. God was going to call, was calling them into to evangelistic. If they would be obedient, God would bless them. God would anoint them. God would confirm his word with them and everything. And just a bunch of script, a bunch of things that God, word that God gave me for them. Well, anyways, they got upset with me because that wasn't what they wanted. They wanted to be pastors. So what they did is they went to a, a Bible training thing to be a pastor. They tried to start a church. They never came back to my meeting after that, after I gave them that word, you know, and then they, 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 they tried to become associate pastors at some church. They had a lot of problems. And then they tried to start their own little tiny church. It was like about three or four people, five people. Then fights broke out. All kinds of crazy things happened because they were in disobedience to what God, what God wanted them to do. And, you know, and, 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 and like I said, that what, what happened is, is, uh, 
this went on for like seven years. They kept trying their hardest. At least they were they were persevering, you know, like you were talking about earlier. They were persevering to try to become pastors. You know, that's a good thing. But then seven years later, I get a call. Seven years later, Walter, I get a call and they said, uh, they, they said, Brother Albert, I go, yes. And he said, This is this is so and so. And I said, Hey, how you doing, brother? He goes, he goes, he goes, Yeah, first of all, he goes, I want to apologize. I go, or what? I go, I haven't seen you in like seven years. And he goes, well, that's why I want to apologize. He goes, we got mad at you because you gave us a word. We thought it was just you that gave us a word for, uh, you know, uh, that God wanted us, was calling us into evangelism. And we, we just got upset because we wanted to be pastors and, and we tried and we had all these problems and whatnot. And then he, then he goes, so I just want to apologize, Jack. Well, you, you weren't disobeying me, brother. You were disobeying God. I said, so, well, you need to do is ask God to forgive you, not me, you know. And then he says, uh, then he says, but I want you to know, he goes, uh, we never forgot that word. He says that he goes, what he goes, just this last year, my my sister and I, we started doing some evangelists, and God started really blessing, and people were being healed, and even some miracles were taking place. He goes, we just wanted to tell you first of all that we were sorry, and that uh, and that we want, you know, uh that I said, well, praise God. I go, that's good. I go, but you wasted seven years. You could have been doing that seven years ago. I go, I believe God would have taken you right after that word was given to, to begin a work and more lives would have been touched. But the important thing was that they did obey, you know, it may have taken some time, but they did, they did obey and things they had to learn and stuff they had to go through, but they did learn and they did obey what the word that God gave them and God started prospering and blessing them in that ministry. So praise but, God for that, you know. It, like well, I, said, I could say seven years is better than 40. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, exactly. You're exactly right, like the Israelites, right? <laughs> right. But, you know, maybe you're watching right now, and maybe you're that person whom God is speaking to or God has already spoken to, and you've got that hesitancy, and uh, you've heard that still small voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit, prompting you to do, to launch out into a particular ministry or to fill a particular need. And that's how ministries begin. God shows you a need and prompts you to meet that need. Oftentimes, that's how it starts. Maybe you're that person right now. You're watching. You think you've came on to this broadcast by accident. It's not by accident. The Holy Spirit brought you here. And now you're you're wondering, what do I do? Well, obey God. You know, um, we were talking about the Israelites and yeah, they lost 40 years in the wilderness. You don't need right. to lose one more day or one more hour. Be obedient to God. Do what God is calling you to do. And we want to pray for you right now that God will help you. You know, it's that still small voice that is prompting you. But at a certain point, you have to put your feet in that water. When uh, Moses led the Israelites through the Red Sea, the sea parted first, and then they walked through the water. But later, when Joshua and the Israelites came to the Jordan, they had to put their foot into the water first. Once they put their foot in the water, that's when the water parted. And that's what God is calling you to do. So, Brother Albert, there are people out there in that. I know that God did not prompt you to talk about this for uh, just to talk about it, but there are people Absolutely. out there. Um, needing that, that just that little uh, that little uh, help to to understand this clearer and to so that they would be encouraged to take that step because maybe they thought oh it's just me or or or, or something like that but you know that's that's again one of the things that if you're uh, thinking it's just me um, it's some, uh, one thing you do is you go ahead and take that step of faith. If it's not the right thing, you're going to feel uneasy. You will not have a peace about it. And you'll know you made a mistake. But if it's what God is prompting you to do, there will be a peace. There's a release that comes when you take that step of faith. And what happens when you take that step of faith, God takes a bunch of other steps and makes things happen. But you have to take your step of faith, just like Naaman had to go into the water, just like other cases we talked about here, people that had to obey God. 
but Albert, um, would you pray for those people that that are out there? Amen. And, and you know, being obedient to the to the voice and to leading in the Holy Spirit, it doesn't just always involve ministry. It doesn't always involve forgiveness and everything. Else. For every little thing, even warnings from God, you know, even warnings like in a dream or vision to show you something, maybe some bad happening to a family member. And the whole purpose is for you to act on it, for you to do something about it. And you have the authority, you have the power, you have the Holy Spirit to do something about it. You have a mouth to speak against it in, the, in this natural realm, but in the spiritual realm, if you speak against it, take authority over the enemy, uh, uh, maybe it shows you maybe your kid getting in a car accident or something. Well, you know, it's not just a bad dream. It's just the Holy Spirit in a dream, maybe showing you because he's been trying to tell you or warn you, but we, we have our minds so occupied with things of this world and things of daily life that we we don't hear god you know we don't hear that still small that guidance that instruction from the holy spirit so sometimes god has to speak to us in a dream you know to show us and then you've got to do something about it you know you take authority i find that devil that's trying to hurt my son or my daughter and act to see so it's more important it's not just it's not just ministry or, or for healing and forgiveness and this and that it is for all that but it's also for warnings, also from God, the Holy Spirit, that still small voice trying to warn you or something. Let me give you a verse really quick here on Job 33, uh, 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 14. It says, for God speaks once, yea, twice. In other words, God's trying to get our attention. It says, yet man perceives it not. We don't perceive it because we have our minds to occupy. And then it says, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men in slumberings upon the bed, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Verse 17 says that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. So, I mean, you know, it, it's it's just yielding and, and being obedient to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit. And the more we do it, the more we practice doing it and being obedient to it, uh, the more God will, will, will speak to us. And it's not a matter of the more he will speak to us. He's always trying to speak to us, always trying to lead us and guide us. But we're just, like you said, our, our, our minds are too occupied with things to do with things, you know, family, you know, children, well, husbands, wives, and, you know, business and whatever. But uh, you know, sometimes God, when we're, when our minds are asleep, when our intellect or our, our souls are asleep, then God gives us a vision. Then we need to be, we also, through that vision, need to be obedient to what God wants us to do. And then, uh, then God will bless you. I mean, the more we yield, it comes down to more yielding, 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 and yielding, constant yielding to the Holy Spirit, constant yielding to God, the Spirit, and God helping us. Amen. Amen. Would you pray, Brother Albert, for those Absolutely. in that Absolutely. valley of decision, so to speak, okay? Yeah. yeah, amen. Father, we just come before your precious throne of grace. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. He's our helper. He's our guide. He's the one that gives us instruction. He teaches us. He knows all things. First John 2, 20, he knows all things and he's in us. And all that, he's empowered us, Father, to do to do what he instructs, what he leads and guides us to do, he empowers us to do so. He gives us the grace, which is the power of God to be bold, to be courageous, and, and to do and be obedient when you lead us and instruct us what to do. So, Father, we just pray for those that are in that valley of decision, as Walter said. We pray and ask you, Lord, to lead them, to guide them. Father, that you, that you give them a boldness and a courage and grace the power to be able to overcome their emotions, Lord, and, and to overcome fear in Jesus' name, to be obedient to the Holy Spirit as he leads them and guides them, Lord, to, to destroy the works of the enemy in their lives and in their family's lives, to, to, to bless their family, Lord, to, to bless their own selves and their ministries, Lord, and their finances, in every area to bless them in their physical bodies for healing, <clears throat> there's maybe something that the Holy Spirit's leading them, instructing them to do that they're not obeying, Lord. And then they're wondering why they're standing on this scripture and that scripture and nothing's happening. But yet the whole time the Holy Spirit is speaking to them about doing one simple little thing. And if they would obey, their healing would come. So, Father, we thank you that that every hindrance, every lie of the devil that's blocking them or, or trying to, to blind them, Lord, to the knowledge 
or to an instruction to the leading of the Holy Spirit to receive their answers, to receive guidance, to receive a miracle, to receive healings in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that the Holy Spirit is leading them, that he is guiding them, and he is anointing them and blessing them with your will, your plan, your purpose for their lives, and also your blessing upon their lives, your healing for their life, your deliverance for their minds and their bodies, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. So, Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory. Thank you so much for the Holy Spirit, who is our helper and our guide, Lord, our instructor, and our power in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Father, we lift up those that are in need of healing. Lord, we send your word yep. to Stephen in Canada, who had had a lung transplant. Lord, heal yes. him, cause his body to accept and not reject the new lungs that he received. Touch him right now in this moment. Yes, heal Lord. him. Touch his wife and children also and yep. parents. Yep. Father, we send your word to uh uh, to Sister Rosie, uh, ask you to comfort and lead her as yeah, uh, yeah. she mourns the loss of her husband. Father, we lift up Joe and we command the gout to leave once and for Jesus. all from his body in Jesus' yes, name Lord. right now. Jesus. And we command every trace of uh, the effects of COVID to leave Maria in San Diego in Jesus' in name. Of Jesus. We declare healing over her and all of those who may be at the sound of our voice needing healing from COVID. Yes. In Jesus' name, we rebuke that diabolical virus. We command you to come out of your, yes. uh, of the, your body in Jesus' in name. name. And we speak healing from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, healing to your lungs, healing to your head, healing yes. to your healing to your heart, the healing to your bloodstream in Jesus' name. Lord God, uh, we uh, have become aware of severe lockdowns in parts of China, um, yes. of, of uh, people uh, being told to gather food uh, uh, for some unknown uh, event. But we come against that in the name of Jesus. Name we come of against the ravaging of virus, even in that nation. In the name of Jesus, we pray for your protection on God's people especially on your service, that you would use them in the midst of this crisis to heal the sick, to bring hope to the suffering. And Father God, we just come against that attack of the devil, and we speak revival. May revival fires be loosed in China in this hour. In the name of Jesus Christ, likewise in Ukraine, we come against all those severe lockdowns, and we pray for your intervention. We pray for healing of those that need healing. Lord, we pray for protection of your body yeah. for especially your servants yeah. in that nation and, and also in Russia in Jesus name. Hallelujah. And Father, we lift up America. Lord, we humbly come yes. before you asking you to extend yeah. your grace one more time. And yes. we do what Brother Albert has mentioned. We uh, cast yeah. down those uh, principalities, those yeah. strongholds in the minds yeah. of people. We bind those demonic spirits. Uh, we break the hold of uh, of but, demons over people's yes, minds with lies and confusion and obfuscation. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak freedom. We speak liberty, deliverance from demonic influence and demonic oppression, especially in those who are in leadership positions in this government, in the federal, the state, and local levels of government. And we pray for revival. We ask that your kingdom yes. would come, your will would be done in this nation. Lord, awaken your church that it may shine as yes. a city on a hill in this hour, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. In yes. Jesus' name. Albert, would you continue praying as the Lord yes. leads? You know, one thing that came to me now, and, and, and I never thought of this this way, the, these edicts that are being declared around the world through various governments, you know, over the people to put them in bondage, you know, and with these mandates of masks and you know, over, a, over a virus that is that is 99% curable. I went through it myself, you know, uh, and it's not fun, but, but, but it, it was curable. And I'm supposedly in a in an area, and even my wife went through it with 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 uh, comorbidities, 
major comorbidities that she survived and without any medic medication or anything, just just vitamins and and things like that, just juices and soup. But it wasn't fun, but but it's survivable, you know, and it's it's fear that's being mong fear mongers. It's a spirit, you know, and the thing that came to me was that God, that that there's the verse in, in Isaiah 54, 17. It says no weapon, and this and this is a weapon. It's a it's a it's a weaponized virus. You know, it, it was weaponized on purpose too. So it, the scriptures say, "No weapon formed against us shall prosper." And it's, and then the second part of that verse is extremely important with the, about what's going on and what's happening right now is these edicts, these things, these these laws that are being passed, the, uh, these mandates that are being released. These are words. These are words from politicians around the world. Well, first of all, that no weapon formed against the, the body of Christ, first and foremost, but, uh, but, but people, period, God's people shall prosper. The word of God said, we decree and declare that. And Lord, we can, and then it says in the second part, it says, if anyone rises up against you in word, you shall condemn it. So in the name of Jesus, corporately together, we condemn these edicts of masking, of of, of, of mandating vaccines in Jesus' name. We take authority over that, those words in Jesus' name. And in Isaiah 50, 59, 19, it says that the, when the devil, when the enemy comes, it comes in like a flood, and that's what he's coming in like a flood through these edicts, through these, to these mandates. He's coming in like a flood to put people in fear and in bondage. It says the Holy Spirit will lift up a standard, and that's what he does through us because he's in us. And the one that holds back that spirit of lawlessness, that spirit of antichrist in Jesus' name is us through our verbal uh, authority over all the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, making these mandates and edicts in the name of Jesus. So in Jesus' mighty name, we condemn every mandate, every edict of vaccination, mandating vaccination in Jesus' name, mandating masking around the world in these different countries, in America, in Canada, in Australia. New Zealand, the Middle East, Russia, China, Ukraine, in Jesus' name, and the fear mongering. We bind the powers of fear and lawlessness in that spirit of Antichrist, mandating these things, uh, proclaiming these, these, these mandates in the name of Jesus. We condemn your words and command them to drop powerless in Jesus' name. And for the people, Lord, we ask that the people rise up in word, in Jesus' name, in word, in authority, in spiritual authority over these spiritual principalities and powers that we are wrestling with, not flesh and blood. So, Father, we thank you. We decree and declare it that the Holy Spirit is lifting up a standard of power, authority, dominion, and casting down these edicts in Jesus' name and the laws to be changed in these countries concerning these... <coughs> <laughs> concerning this fear mongering, this corporate, um, this corporate lie, these corporate lies and media lies in the name of Jesus, their words are destroyed. We condemn those words in the name of just corporately. We condemn those words that are, that, uh, that are, that are been spoken against people of these countries, of the countries around the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Well, thank you, Brother Albert. And I want to invite you to join us tomorrow is uh, our Spanish broadcast, but it is going to be bilingual. Brother Tony Abram will be on with me. So it'll be English and Spanish. So you can, uh, if you speak English or you speak Spanish, you could uh, be on the broadcast with us tomorrow, 10 Pacific, 1 p.m. East Coast time. And tonight, if you can't uh, sleep, uh, join me at 9.45 p.m. as I teach in Nepal Youth Conference. Uh, so uh, pray for that. Let's pray for the youth of uh, uh, not only Nepal, but also India. Uh, this is a great Muslim, I'm sorry, uh, I apologize, a great uh, Hindu holiday. And there is a, a uh, the youth are gathering, Christian youth are gathering, and they need God's influence. They get, need God's intervention in their lives. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring the youth of uh, Nepal and India. Uh, Father, as they face pressures of their uh, local cultural uh, holidays that they would not be swayed by the uh, uh, by, by the pressure of other Press. youth pressure of society to Press. conform and do things that are immoral that are evil 
And Lord God, we pray for their salvation. We pray for their yes. deliverance. And we pray that in they the would Lord. rise up as strong Christian believers and as uh, oh. soldiers of the cross of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, once again, we lift up those who are um, uh, in need around the world. Some are in need of healing. Some are in need of salvation. But Lord God, we send your word and we pray that you would heal them and deliver them out of their destruction in Jesus' name. If you are in need of healing right now, put your hand where you are suffering. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I command that pain to leave. I command that arthritic pain to leave. I command that shoulder pain to leave. I speak healing to your sight, healing to your lungs, healing to your back. Yes, that lower back, receive healing right now in Jesus' name. Those feet, receive your healing right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If you, amen. If you have not received Jesus as your Savior yet, would you repeat this prayer after me and say, Dear Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus I admit I'm a sinner. Forgive me all of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me, that he resurrected from the dead, and I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Save me, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer sincerely, Jesus has come into your heart. Now, do three things each day. Talk to God. We, we call it prayer, but it's just talking with God. You don't know how, just begin by saying something like, good morning, Lord Jesus, help me today. And each time you pray, you'll learn how to communicate better and better with the Lord. Allow him to speak to you in the primary way that God speaks to us is through his word, the Bible. So read God's word, the Bible. If you don't know where to start, I recommend you go to the fourth book in the New Testament, the gospel according to St. John. Begin to read there. And uh, the whole Bible is important, but I'm just trying to lead you to where to start, where it's easier to, uh, um, well, you can get a better understanding of the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ for you. And third, tell others, Jesus is now your Lord, your Savior, and find a Bible-believing church where people are prayed for, where the gospel is preached so that you may grow in your newfound faith. Brother Albert, thank you again for joining me today. May the Lord bless you. And uh, any, just a final thought here, 30 seconds. <laughs> just, just thank God for everything. Be thankful in whatever God has done for us. What he, he's done so much more than we, can, than we even imagine. It's, uh, it's, it, it behooves us to, to get into the Word of God to find out what He has done and to believe it and act upon it. Amen. Praise God again. I just sense that there are people out there. I know we've gone over the hour here, but there's people. There are people out there who are in need of healing right now, Brother Albert. Uh, is the Lord showing you anything, any particular need? Yes. Amen. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we just sent forth your word and healed them. Psalm 107. 20 said so you sent forth your word and healed them in jesus name lord i thank you lord as they obey the holy spirit that the holy spirit the power that's already in them to heal them to deliver them father that they acknowledge that power they acknowledge the holy spirit lord as he's there to help them to lead them to guide them into healing and in, in healing and also your provision and also your deliverance in jesus name lord i pray that you give them revelation knowledge understanding and wisdom in jesus name to know what is the hope of their calling to know that you sent forth your word and healed them in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. And Lord, as your people are, minister, uh, are listening, Lord, and hearing, uh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, as they are hearing what the, not only what the Holy Spirit is saying through us, but also the Holy Spirit is saying to them personally. They're not, Jesus, one of the things the Lord wants me to tell you is that the, in the scripture, in the gospel of John, he says, I have not left you helpless, or orphaned. God has not left you. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit. He's our helper. He's our guide. He's our instructor, our teacher. He is the power of God that empowers us. So acknowledge him. Acknowledge what all of what God has given to you and what God has done for you through Christ Jesus, and you will receive your healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I just sense 
uh, Ukraine keeps coming up. Someone in Ukraine, the Lord is speaking to you. The Lord is encouraging you to take that step of faith that you need to take. And God is touching you right now in Jesus' name. Just receive your healing right where you're at. Just, just say, thank you, Lord. I receive my healing. The anointing of God is on you right now. God is touching Amen. you. Just Amen. begin to thank God and say, Lord, I receive my healing right now. I am healed by his stripes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Share this broadcast here so that others may receive hope, so that others may be prayed for, so that others may be encouraged. And there are many who need to hear this message on obedience and on yielding to God. Thank you again, Brother Albert. God richly bless you. Write us your prayer request so that we may agree together with you for your healing, for your prayer with you in prayer for that need. And remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and for ever. Join me tonight at 9.45 p.m. Pacific, uh, live in Nepal. Well, it will it'll be live here in California, too, and they'll be the, the youth will be in Nepal. Well, God richly bless you. Thank you again, Brother Albert. Amen. God bless you.